If you're selling your beats, if you're posting them on IG, you have to prepare your beats with a proper mix and I'm gonna show you how to do just that. Before we get into it, I gotta let you know this video is sponsored by Too Prolific Mastering. That's where I get all of my masters and that's where you can get them too for a very low price. Get your mix, get your master and make more sales. Sound professional. So you got this beat right and now you want to mix it, you want to make it sound proper so that it could sound great on any phone, on any computer and that your customer can really be enjoying it. Chorus is key so make sure you start with that. This will also give the artist a better view of the theme that you should go with and the potential of the song. So here we have the final project. We have the, 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 the tracks that I organized according to their names and I put some color codes so that I can recognize instantly which track uh, is which and this is gonna allow me to go much faster in the mix. Here we have the kick. The reason why I wanna start with the kick is that it's already pretty good so all I'm gonna do is just add a little gain and then I'm gonna always choose mono. So all of the, the percussion usually, I put my claps, I put my kicks, I put the 808s and mono of course. Put the gain on all of the tracks so that it sounds properly proper and always put it in between minus 15 and minus 10. So at this point now that I've put like the gain on all of my tracks, I'm gonna try separate them with mono and stereo. So in order to have them dancing with each other, have the instruments uh, sounding good we're just gonna pan a few of them so for instance I'm gonna put the scent on the on the right and I'm gonna put this little sample right here on the left at this point you're not trying to make it sound cool you're trying to make it sound clean you can also put a gain on the master track so that it allows you to just bring everything down if you see it's still peaking. Now that my gain station is done, what I want to move on to is to setting everything up with the EQs. So the first one, I'm going to scan through the whole spectrum so that I can reduce everything that just sounds out of the way, you know? Too much. You don't want your EQ to be just looking all crazy with a bunch of highs like you don't want your EQ to be looking like this. You just want it to be very, very balanced and just take out what you don't need. Everything else can stay. Also, when you're taking out, you have to take out very, very thin. But if you're rising, you have to rise very, very wide, okay? You can also add a minus 20 cut because everything that's below uh, 100 is not necessary. In this case, we don't have anything, so it's okay. It's a clean sample. What I'm looking at is exactly where it's peaking and where it's above zero. This is gonna avoid your instruments from clashing. If they're playing in the same range of frequency, they're probably gonna clash. Now we're getting a little bit better. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add an EQ also, but this time I'm gonna be looking for boost because it's a percussion, so you really want it to pop out. You don't want your percussion to sound too flat because this is hip hop, so you want that power, you want that strength coming from the center. Here you see that we have the whole frequency of the clap, the whole clap is above 400 hertz. So, like I said, when you rise it, you want to rise it wide. For my hi-hats, I usually like to play with a uh, left and right. So I would usually add, I don't add much effects on my hi-hats. I'm just going to add a simple EQ and boost it at the top. I'm also going to cut it right below because I don't want it to be popping out anywhere or interfering with anything else. Now for the open hi-hats, I'm going to do the same thing. At certain parts of my hi-hat, it's a little bit sharp, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is just cut out that added sharpness. Everything else can stay, leave it natural, leave it clean. Here we reach to the 808. The 808 is gonna sound good because it's everything below. You can rise it a lot, you can rise it a little. The EQ is gonna basically be your main go-to tool for that. But what I'm gonna do is just make a little holes so that my kick can transpire through the bass. My 808 is already fat and I don't want to lose that energy. Now for the kick, as I say, you add an EQ, but you try to take care of everything. I think everything between 50 and 80 is a great location for the kick. As I cut a little hole, I'm going to put a hole right here for 80. Also, what I can do is add a second bump right where you see it's peaking. So that's like 56. I'm looking at these numbers here. So I'm looking at 56 and I'm looking at 80. I'm going to go right over to my 808 and I'm going to bust another hole in my 808 round 56 as well. So I'm looking at 56, bam, and I'm just going to cut it there. 
Now you can realize that the, that the 808 and the kick are both working together and they're not clashing with each other. Now that I've put EQ throughout the whole project, what I'm going to move on on is leaving a pocket for the vocals. The whole track needs a kind of pocket where you know the voice is gonna, where the voice of any artist would end up. So we're gonna have to look at the main EQ and try to see exactly. What I would like to use for this type of uh, monitoring is a Voxango span. So this is a cool plugin because you get to see how your stereo mastering looks. So here I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this whole vibe and I'm trying to see exactly where is the pocket. So right now I have a pocket between 400 Hertz, which is not bad, but I realizing that my kick is still very high and I'm looking at the highs as well, it's not very balanced. So I think it's just an issue about volume. What I'm gonna do is maybe I go a little bit too hard on this. I cut down this part here and I reduce I reduce the overall volume. So I'm gonna bring it down to 9.4 and adjust it. Now I'm taking a look at this again. It's a little bit better. Yeah, now we're having something pretty balanced. But that left side is still very high, so I'm gonna bring it down. Yeah, now it's looking more balanced. We have that little pocket from 200 to 100. So that's where the voice is supposed to fit, right? Now that I've added all of this, I got my pocket for the vocals. What I'm going to start adding now is compression. 